January 17th, 1820 was a very special day in the history of English literature. Patrick Bronte and Maria Branwell Bronte had birthed their last child. Many of you may know of the other Bronte sisters, Charlotte and Emily, for their works such as Jane Eyre or Wuthering Heights, but many people do not realize the importance of Anne Bronte. Anne Bronte was the youngest of all the Bronte siblings, but sadly enough, one year after she was born, her mother passed away. Um, after her mother's death, her mother's sister, Elizabeth, came to help the Bronte family, and she was known as Aunt Branwell. Now, Anne loved Aunt Branwell. She loved her so much that she even chose to sleep with her aunt instead of her sisters, Charlotte and Emily. Later in life, we see the effects of her mother's death and her aunt's later on death show up in her writing, such as An Orphan's Lament. In An Orphan's Lament, she discusses that the flowers die twice and twice the rustling leaves fall. Now, I think that that is subtly hinting to the fact that not only was she orphaned once when her mother passed away when she was one, but then again she had to go through the whole ordeal again when her aunt passed away later in her life because her aunt became her second motherly figure to her. Throughout their childhood, Anne and Emily became very close while Charlotte and Branwell kind of bonded together. Anne and Emily created this imaginary world called Gondol in which they would write poems and other literature about. Anne writes in the style of Gondol usually, and you can tell that it's a Gondolian poem because she'll sign it um, with one of the imaginary characters' names. She writes a poem called A Fragment, which sounds a little bit like this. Maiden, thou art thoughtless once of beauty or of grace, simple and homely in attire, careless of form and face. Then whence this change, and why so oft dost smooth thy hazel hair? And wherefore deck thy youthful form with such unwearied care? Tell us, and cease to tire our ears with yonder hackneyed strain. Why wilt thou play those simple tunes so often o'er again? Nay, gentle friends, I can but say that childhood's thoughts are gone. Each year its own new feelings brings, and years move swiftly on. Later, Anne changes the beginning of the poem from Maiden to Ellen, which most likely references back to her and Charlotte's friend, Ellen Nussie, who was there for most of their lives and even became very close to Anne. Uh, they became so close that when Anne was on her deathbed, basically, and she knew she was going to die, she requested that Charlotte bring Ellen, and they both returned to Scarborough, where Anne had uh, before been and thought was beautiful, and she took trips with the family that she used to stay with. Anne was a governess to some families. One, the Robinsons, was especially significant. She worked for the Robinsons for a while, and created really strong bonds with the children there, but the parents were not satisfied with her work there, and um, they let her go. But during her time with the Robinsons, she shows many signs of homesickness, and she even writes to her siblings that she doesn't want to be there anymore, and she's not happy there. In 1845, right before Anne's death, the three Bronte sisters decided that they would publish their poems using male names. Anne went under the name of Acton Bell, and together they created what was named the Poems of Kerr, Ellis, and Acton Bell. Sadly, on May 28, 1849, Anne Bra Bronte died and was buried at St. Mary's, overlooking the sky overlooking the sea of Scarborough, where she wanted to spend most of her holidays. Anne is often forgotten in the Bronte sisters' family, but it should not be so. 
Now, if you're interested in learning more about her, you can read my paper or research her for yourself, and I think you should.